Good evening, everybody. We have a very good panel here. And because of the time, I will request that I'm going to introduce quickly, and then afterwards, I will request you to just give one minute about what you are doing from sustainability angle in your organization so that we can take the discussion forward. Namita Asnani, she is from the Global Head of Sustainability Hitachi Energy. And we have Mr. Sudhir Jain from Vira 91. And you can see he's a little bit down due to Vira. Uh -huh. Abhay Kumar Shivastav is from Mankind Pharma. Manliness is available with him. I just had a discussion. And Mr. Prabhu Narayan Singh is from Vikram Solar. We thought he will come with some solar panel on his coat and all, but let's see next time. So Namita, I will just request all of you, just give one minute and tell exactly what you are doing in your organization from sustainability angle, preferably about India, not about Japan. Uh, okay, so <coughs> uh, thank you, Dr. Yogendra Saxena. I'm sorry, I will have to speak a bit uh, at a global level, but of course that also includes what we are doing in India, because that's what will put the perspective here. Uh, and uh, like you mentioned, uh, I am from Hitachi Energy, that is a company in power networks and power grids, and I'm specifically in the Transformers business unit, uh, heading the sustainability program there. So what is it that uh, we, the way we approach this is that we want to take a full business value stream look uh, for sustainability, a life cycle look in our products, because you, know, you can always do something in one space and it may compromise another space. So we, we start with our supply chains, which is actually now a very key area because a lot, lot happens in supply chains. In fact, the biggest impacts in sustainability for big corporations actually come in from their supply chains. And the main thing here is the visibility. It sta all starts with visibility of what's happening there. Only then we can really improve things there. And then, of course, our own operations and uh, manufacturing with uh, very low carbon technology or uh, reaching carbon neutral manufacturing in the next five to 10 years is on our agenda. Uh, in our own portfolio, I won't go too much, but yes, it is about product development and technology development for, uh, for the correct uh, you know, products now, which, which reduce impacts or facilitate decarbonization, for example. And very important is end of life processes now, which companies were not so focused on before. So looking into things like circular models, et cetera. And uh, I look into the holistic development of the sustainability strategy for the business. Thank, Thank you. you. Abhinav Narayan Singh, please. Yeah. Abhinav Kumar, sure. <laughs> Not a problem. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you for inviting me. So I'm Abhinav Kumar Shrivastu, nearly 32 years of experience working for Mankind, which is basically into pharmaceuticals, that is formulation API. Now we are slowly venturing into agri-tech and pet food as well. I will request you to just say what your organization and you are looking basically from sustainability angle. R right, because right. your name is already here. Right, I right. also mentioned twice. Sorry? I also mentioned twice. <laughs> from okay. sustainability angle, what so exactly you are doing in organization, or you are looking after in organization if you are not doing it. Right. So from uh, the sustainability aspect, we are looking to the three aspects. The first is like doing an uh, ESG uh, gap assessment for our suppliers and collaborating with them. The second is that since we are in pharmaceutical business, so it's highly regulated. Uh, so, and more on the quality side, so we focus a lot on quality by design. We are slowly moving to green by design, so trying to adopt the greener technology there. And third is that focusing our how to measure the scope three uh, emissions and how uh, we can like uh, do something on, on terms of the sustainability. So these are the three focus area from mankind for this financial year. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening everyone. Uh, at Vikram Solar, we are the early movers in solar sector and uh, you all know that uh, solar sector is growing like anything and actually this is the need of the hour. And our tagline is creating climate for change. So we at Vikram Solar, we are uh, manufacturing, our main business is manufacturing solar panels and serving our customers globally. We have a uh, big customer base in US and Europe, uh, other than India. Thank you. 
So I'll take two lines. So first is that, you know, Bira is an Indian company. So whatever we are talking about is what we are doing in India to begin with. Uh, the importance of uh, climate for us is so big that the three by marketing pillars that we have taken, cricket, which you know Bira sponsors, curry, and climate. And in climate, what we are targeting is that we want all our manufacturing sites to be net zero by 2025. We are a very new company. We have started just eight years back. And last year, we have already achieved net zero in one of our breweries in Mysore. So that's the key focus we have. Thank you. Just uh, want to add something. I am Yogen Saxena from ex Tata Power Group CSO. And now I am only in this awareness program of sustainability and me and my Swachh Bharat for primary and secondary school. I've been addressing, uh, Srivast, I'm going to ask first question from you. Yeah. We had a very good discussion about supply chain. You know, right. what exactly you are doing for greening the supply chain in mankind, pharma, number one. Number two, are you doing anything for PSCI, which is Pharmaceutical Supply Chain Initiative? Yeah, so, so the, uh, the, if you see the pharmaceuticals industry, so they have got a lot of suppliers, small or big, right? Boss, I am sorry. Yeah what mankind is doing for PSCI and what you are doing, are you doing anything in supply chain for greening the supply chain yeah. or no? Yeah, 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 yeah. So greening means like the biggest problem is that the different suppliers which are there, so we are just collaborating and trying to educate them. That is the big first thing which we are doing. Educating them, asking them to go for a more of sustainable uh, a sustainable thing they we are like also requesting them to go to more greener technology because we are using a lot of solvents and other stuff so that's the thing which we are doing if i'm supplying acetan acetanol to you ultimately you are buying uh, suppose i am making acetaldehyde for you yeah. and you are buying it am i supposed to change my technology or you are supposed to look after at your end so by selecting a supplier you must see whether he is using the green technology or not yeah so so any program you have for supplier chain or no that is the question for supplier yes so there are the three pillars which i talked about the first about the supplier the second is the green by design so we are also working on our own manufacturing processes are you supplying any product to europe or american countries yeah, to US as well. They might be insisting you for PSCI. Are you doing anything for no, PSCI? No, for pharma, they are not insisting that. Any European supplier is not buying anything from India unless they go for a PSCI audit. Uh, even I have done many PSCI audit after my supervision from Tata Power. So, uh, so on even behalf we, of yeah, we are supplying to US and we are also supplying to some of the European countries as well. So I think uh, I'm not sure because for pharma, there is only one compliance they have to do is from the uh, European uh, agencies, especially which is like uh, EU, and for US is USFDA. Namita, let's see a little bit about the harder section, transforma. Huh? What exactly you are doing about sustainability reporting for Indian operation? So for our Indian operations, you know, we have to have uh, the Indian uh, so there is a regulation where we have you have to provide the corporate sustainability your social responsibility report annually and uh, that includes the, the metrics of course is already defined and that also includes our scope one and scope two emissions in our facilities scope three is right now not compulsory but we are encouraged to do it and I, I suppose, I mean, by scope one, scope two, scope three, for everybody's knowledge, we are talking about carbon emissions here uh, in our own manufacturing facilities. So uh, what you do within your company is scope one and scope two, and what happens downstream or upstream is scope three. So are you writing sustainability report for Indian operations? Yes, we and are. Exactly how many operations you have in Transformers? So when we in write India. a sustainability report for our no, Indian, Indi it yeah. will be all. I mean, it will not just be transformers. It will be for Hitachi Energy okay. India. Okay. And uh, we would have about 10 factories in and India. And it's available on the website. Yes. So if anybody interested, certainly can go and see on the Yeah. Website. 
because we are a listed company. We, Hitachi Energy is a listed company in India, so we have to release it. So BR report is something else. Yeah. That's a eyewash. If anybody is coming from operation, you might be knowing about environmental audit, which was started in 94 by Common Nath. Each and every industry is supposed to submit an environmental audit. It comes like an application at the end of the March, and ministry, all pollution board people and ministry people just file it because they are not capable of reading it. They are not able to find whether this is good or this is bad. Same thing is happening with the BR report in SEBI also. This is one thing I wash. I say when our Air Act is 70, Water Act is 74, Ganga is polluted. Air Act is 1981 and Delhi is polluted, and net zero is going to, I don't think anything is possible, even by 2070, but let's see what Gensab is doing by 2030 about net zero at Bira. Great, so question, and uh, yes, I think what we are focusing is on scopes one and two, which is energy, and if you ask me net zero, my, uh, our motto is definitely reduce, recycle, and reuse. All the capital expenses come much later. Because you can always keep wasting and put a lot of investment to control or recycle that. So we are focusing. We are a new company. We are a very startup company. So we are focusing on scope one and two as of now. Scope three, we think, is much too big for us to begin with. Now we are just beginning our journey. First, we are trying to understand scope three. But scope one and two, we are think we have understood very well. We are using all energy efficient equipment or uh, you know, trying to upgrade our equipment to energy efficiency and focusing a lot on waste reduction. So this is our key focus. For the members interest, I would just like to mention here, Nirvan University or Nirvan Management Institute recently last year, March, did a survey and could find out that roughly 441 companies, corporates of India, are publishing sustainability report. Then I was going in detail about Ambuja cement where I worked for 18 years. The scope three emission of Ambuja cement is about 10% of the total emission. We cannot do anything in scope one. We should put zero for scope two, means creating at your own, like DG sets, which is more polluting. But Indian corporates are not thinking in that direction. A scope three is not only measuring about the, the staff coming to your organization. If you go to greenhouse gas protocol, there are about 23 items which should be covered in scope three, but Indian corporates are not touching in scope three at all, you know. Yes, solar, everybody's talking about green energy, everybody talking about green. When I started my career in 74, Everything was about environment. If you can put a plant, you will say I'm an environment professional, and that is happening today. Everybody feels I am an ESG professional. <laughs> so what can be possible for this country as an individual? What we should do for greening our country from solar point of view? OK, thank you. So from solar perspective, I'll tell this is one of the form of energy. Uh, that is first uh, uh, that is coming through the eternal source so we should use as much as possible uh, the solar implement solar although there are other renewable energy and I don't discount uh, their uh, uh, this thing importance but solar is something which is easy and can be installed in the areas wherein we can't uh, uh, supply through grid and uh, which are in remote and inaccessible areas. From that perspective, this is uh, one of the source uh, which we can use everywhere. Uh, so, Raksav, I'm covering uh, this. Uh, your question was on solar, what can we do? So my only advice is please use as much as possible because this is the source which is cheaper and can be uh, accessible in all areas. About 10 years back, the cost of solar energy, one megawatt production, mm -hmm. was much high, and we cannot think of even in solar. Yes. What is the cost today, and what will be the cost tomorrow for an individual household? Yeah, so it is coming down drastically, and even now when we are talking, this year itself, it has come down uh, by around 20%, if, I, uh, if I'm not wrong since January itself. 
this year. So it is coming down drastically and it, is, it will go further down. So please uh, uh, don't hesitate in going out for it because still it w you, uh, you the power that you will fetch will be cheaper than any other power that you will be having from grid or, or any other source. So any time is good time to go for solar. Do not wait for uh, 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 getting it uh, becoming cheaper and cheaper. Okay. Namita, there was a time when Sunita Narayan mentioned about Coca-Cola and Pepsi. And Cook mentioned, no, we treat our, we supply Coca-Cola as per our U.S. standards. But in India, the water quality is bad, so that is the reason Coca-Cola quality in India is bad. And I mentioned, let's treat the water first to the Coca-Cola standard of U.S. and then give the better Coca-Cola. Coming back to Hitachi, what you are doing in Japan which you are not doing in India? So From as sustainability okay. angle point, environment point of view. Okay, so as far as regulations, etc., cetera, are concerned, of course, it is going to be the local regulations. But, however, this is not only about regulations anymore. This is... Uh, about understanding what are the risks that you could be having in your business if you're not fall if you are not uh, you know fall, uh, making sure that you're reducing whatever be any toxins any emissions that are happening across your business value stream now what is it that we are doing in japan that we are not doing in india i wouldn't really say that there's anything specific like that what really is the focus now, and I mentioned that earlier also, in, uh, apart from things like decarbonization and reducing impacts, etc., is a cir our circular business models. So it's about looking into, so we, we are supplying transformers, and uh, transformers have a long life cycle, no doubt, but there's a huge installed base of transformers across the world now. And it's now looking into how efficiently is it possible, are there business models possible where you take the old transformers and see what you can take out from them and make, you know, use them. It's a question of making the circular loop more efficient. So developing technology which is less energy in intensive, which is uh, the, where the collection process is smoother. For, for the efficiency to come. And you have minimum amounts going into things like landfills, or you have minimum amounts of, ha or you have zero hazardous waste going into our soil, water, land, etc. Those are the focus, the new focus areas now. So are you buying back the old transformers as net zero effort? No, that, that is what we are looking at. Sorry, circular economy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 what we are look. We are looking at what are the technologies, what are the business models that can make this happen, and it's all actually in pilot stage only, right? Okay. Abhay, you mentioned in your biodata, which is very big, two words: transparency and scope three. What yeah, are you doing right. in transparency, and what are you doing in scope three? That's very interesting question, actually. Question will be always interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My whole life because, was on because, because, uh, because everybody is like shying away from scope 3. Everybody is like focusing on scope 1 and scope 2. That's the reason I said it's very interesting. Because what we are doing in scope 3 is like in the whole day, I think, though I joined at uh, somewhere around 1 p.m., so a lot of digitalization and uh, digital uh, supply chain things are being discussed. So they are the very good source of feeding a, uh, an input for scope three emissions. So for example, in transportation, we have started using what uh, in supply chain, they, they did some uh, uh, tracking, they put some IoT and RFID, did other stuff, right? They were tracking that uh, logistic movement. And we use the same data for collecting the data are for you, the scope. Are three. you measuring and publishing yes. or no? No, I am st we are still like doing a kind of a pilot to collect all these datas to some extent uh, uh, till the last report which uh, I discussed. CRI started in 2002. How yeah. long will we keep on doing piloting? Uh, right. <laughs> 
the first thing is to accept that we we should be serious about the uh, scope 3 which this is, is our seriousness uh, about sustainability uh, yes the cor corporate communication ladies are looking after sustainability reporting they have no idea about the environmental legislation they have no idea about the companies act they have no idea about the labor relation you know they have no idea whether security is working 12 hours a day or 24 hours a day but they want a very nice sustainability report with plastic on top of it are you doing the same thing <laughs> no 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 i'm sorry i want to give you the clear picture that's the reason i want that they must answer something right you know so 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 at least collecting data we have got courage enough to start collecting data and Boss, i don't agree a group like mankind is between wasting so much money on the product which is and the ad advertisement and is still thinking as i mentioned dhg protocol if you go there are 23 items which you must cover in scope 3 a scope 3 is not easy and india should not do a scope 3 also because we have a lot of problems, truckers which are coming, they are not That's up to correct. the mark also, for it, which we use for transportation, basically. If you can capture your own staff data, it is more than sufficient. Even that you are not capturing because the software costs you 15 lakhs and MDs are not agreeing for that 15 lakhs of rupees. Do you have a EHS manager in your company? Yes. Do you have and a sustainability person in your company? Yes. You have in corporate office? Yes. What is his name? Suresh Raju. He is looking after sustainability or he's a man of sustainability? No, no, he's looking, he's looking after, after sustainability. No, 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 no. If, if you have a sustainability manager, he should have come here rather than you. Uh, yes, that I agree, that I agree. You know, this is the problem of environment in India. And Modi ji want net zero by 2070, which is not going to happen. Jens of me and you are almost of same age. You have more gray hair because I'm using dye hair. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me exactly what you are doing in United Breweries, not Bira. General, things are happening which we are discussing or First it's not all, happening? I will not be able to tell what I, they are doing now. Okay, what Bira <laughs> is doing you tell. So, I can only tell that when I was in United Breweries, we were focusing Are on you consultant now or you are still working with Bira? Because from CV it gives the impression that you have done some work with Bira. I thought you've gone through the season. I have gone through, yeah. Yes. So I, look, I head the manufacturing yes, sustainability. Yeah. Okay, okay. And I don't yeah. think this is a consultant's job, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Go ahead. It, it, I thought it was very yeah. clear. Uh, yes. Yeah. Please go ahead. What, so what, we, was what they question? are doing basically? Uh, what we are doing basically? Yeah, from this. Thing. So we are looking into very basics. The very basics are, first of all, benchmarking and seeing what can we really reduce. And that, I think, is in our own hands, avoiding wastage. And if you are asking me what wastage has got to do with sustainability, it has everything to do with sustainability. So that's the key focus. We are putting in CapEx, but very intelligently, because we do not have that enormous funds. So we are using CapEx only where we think it is absolutely essential. So for example, we have not yet gone to even a single solar panel. Because we realized that with the limited funds that we want to invest in CapEx, we should first explore the options. So you know there are a lot of organizations, like in Mysore, Karnataka, you can always take green energy from external resource. And we are doing that. So we have uh, brought down our entire electrical energy consumption on green. Similarly, we realized that most of the boilers were coal boilers. And with small modification in the boilers, you can go for biofuel. With two stroke, and it might look very simple, and I believe it is simple, but it needs the will of the people. And that's how we have eliminated, for example, coal totally from all our six locations. We have gone in electricity, as I said, in one location on green. And now we are into the phase two where in the green fields, and I'm very happy that, you know, we have got technologies which we have understood, very basic technologies of heat recovery and reuse. Because if you know in industry, most of the industries, process industry especially, 
70-80% of the energy is heat energy. And uh, this is interesting if it uh, matters. You will realize, except for you know, plants like st cement or steel, which need 1,000 degrees centigrade and that sort of heat, beverages, for example, or FMCG, you can do as much with 80 per degree centigrade of you know, hot water or any hot source instead of going for boilers and generate steam and then create water. And one source of water can be used for some other place after usage to give heat to some other place. This cascading itself is a very, very interesting aspect. So the new brewery that we are designing in Uttar Pradesh, we are looking at almost 50% less thermal usage, electricity us usage, just by incorporating certain things in design itself. So these are the things we are working on. Very good. These are the initiatives basically we should take in the industry, you know. Uh, <coughs> Rupun Randy, in solar basically, what are the government incentives available to industry? If suppose somebody would like to go, what are the advantages? Like I see advertisement on UP, chief minister is also suggesting go on solar roof and all they will get some discount. And is there wheeling is possible with solar or no? Yes, wheeling up, uh, wheeling a power is uh, definitely possible. And uh, as Mr. Jain said, that without installing even a uh, one single solar panel on their own units, they have gone to uh, switch to 100% uh, renewable power. So this is quite possible that uh, you can wheeling up power and you can have open access. And actually, this is becoming uh, very very popular nowadays. Uh, because every industry on industry rooftop, on your own rooftop, you can't have a capacity that uh, you can uh, uh, meet all your power needs. So open access is uh, definitely a good option. Other than this, if you uh, look at uh, the uh, scheme that you just mentioned, subsidies. So government is, uh, all states are now providing subsidies if you install solar panel on your own uh, uh, house. Other than this, for farmers, uh, many farmers are having land which is uh, not very productive. So for them also, there are schemes that uh, you can lease your land for 20 years, 25 years, and get solar panel installed there and uh, become urja data, anna data se urja data bhi ban sakte hain. So there are many schemes. So solar is always useful and uh, worth going for it any time. And every time is good time for solar. Yeah, there was a hitch that accumulation of dust on solar panel is also one area which is little problematic. Have we improved something in that direction or no? Yeah, for larger units, uh, there are robotic cleaning in place. And uh, for smaller units and uh, in, in rural areas, wherever it is there, so uh, normal cleaning is good enough or uh, cleaning with some uh, soft, uh, this thing. Uh, Sprinkler of water? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Namita, you mentioned something about life cycle assessment. Yeah. What exactly you are doing for <coughs> LCA? OK, so uh, yes. The basic, uh, the first thing is for us to evaluate life cycle impacts of our, of our products. And which basically means that when we're talking about carbon emissions, what, or even a lot of other environmental impacts, we will see, we will get a life cycle assessment study done. And we do that partly in-house, and we do that partly with consultants. There are specialized softwares and industry databases for it. Of course, you can have secondary data, but if you have primary data, by primary data, I mean the data that is actually coming from your own facilities, which you have to give. But even from your supply chains, you, you can get some, uh, some data. And then you get a very, very good uh, you know, information on Let's say, let's say in our case, for, the, for, our, for transformers, any equipment that uses electrical energy, there will be some losses. And because transformers are so long, like 35 years, actually our biggest emissions come in the use phase. And in about 90% of our emissions actually come in our use phase. 
Now, if the electricity that is going through the transformers is coming from thermal sources, that's when it's 90%. If the electricity is coming from renewable sources, then the losses that happen by default create lower emissions because you're losing, you know, a transformer loses only 0.5% electricity. But over the lifetime, this becomes substantial. Also, in any power grid, it takes about four to five transformers for the electricity to go from generation to consumption. So you've got to put four to five transformers. That becomes two or three percent. That's pretty high. So we are constantly working on design optimization of transformers. The basic fact is that when you want lower and energy losses, you have to put in more material into the transformer. So now you've got to optimize it. You can't make it so expensive that it, become, you know, it becomes unaffordable. Or even materials have their own issues. You have to mine them. So you have to see not just carbon emissions, but even look other impacts. So that's how, that is the design optimization part that comes in from life cycle impacts. And like I said, you know, it, it's going to depend from site to site. There isn't one specific thing that you can say. It depends where you've installed the transformer. What's the electricity that's going through? So it's a scientific methodology that you have to follow and then look into the material. We now talk to our suppliers and ask them to give, to give us life cycle assessment studies of the material they're putting, the steel, the copper that we buy, and, and then obviously favor the ones with, uh, with the lower emissions. Thank you. Last question to you, Abhay. Namita mentioned something about environmental standards. Mr. Jain also mentioned. What do you feel about, is environment compliance is good for sustainability or not? Yes, definitely, yes. Only yes is not the answer. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, looking for the greener thing, uh, th thanks for greening me. <laughs> no. yeah, if yeah. you say yes, I know it is yes. <laughs> but why, you have to tell me. And so, second thing is not why. Are you doing environment compliance? Let's come to the final point. Yes. Where? Yes, so in all, in all of our which, operations... Which, what you feel about environmental compliance, which notification or which standard you think into my... For pharma industry. I was also in Jubilant. I know about pharma. Uh, the regular... Which Leave is it. The, yeah. This is not the answer. Please, if any question to any panel list and if anything... But we will take two, three questions only because I have only four minutes. So... You first, yeah, because you were smiling a lot. Huh? <laughs> Your name and question, quick question. Huh? Yeah, good afternoon. I am Rajesh. My question to all panelists, because the panel discussion roaming just, around... Just, you have to point one person only, so that we save time. Okay, so my question to Namita. Uh, normally, I had seen the industry talk about economic and environmental strategy around the sustainability. What, as an industry, you are doing about the social uh, part of the sustainability? Okay. So social is a key part of sustainability. And we have to start, first of all, with the welfare of our own workers. But of course, in the case of large companies, usually that's taken care of. Now we have to look into the welfare of our, the workers of our suppliers as well. So we are doing social audits in our supply chain to see whether their fair wages are being given, whether there's any forced labor, let's say we are operating around the world. There can be such cases as well. And, and then coming to our own operation, our own products, we, we have to make sure that, you know, when you're talking about what is happening, for example, end of life, are you putting any hazardous material into the, uh, into the atmosphere? Because that's what's going to spoil the health of the people around you. So th there is a lot being done as far as um, social, you know, equity, diversity and equity is, is a very big topic, especially in America, but also in India now. It's also about that, right? It's about getting all kind of people and not having any kind of biases. This is all to do with social sustainability. Thank you. Yes, please. One more last question after him. Raise your hand so the mic can come faster. Only one person. Yeah, so I will ask a very uh, specific question, uh, especially to you only, Dr. Yagandhi. Uh, you being a very strict uh, task man, like a moderator also for everyone. Now, a question for me, for you is, uh, 
as a country, are we doing good enough in t sustainability? Because as a target also somewhere, we have kept uh, carbon neutral to be 2070. So keeping a target up to 2070 and putting a lot of focus, are we missing something in between? Something is certainly going to happen by yeah. 2070. Yeah. I will not be there, but you will see. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm trying to say that our process of change is very slow. Yes. That I mentioned that our Air Water Act is 1974 and you cannot go to Ganga for a dip. Yeah. Unless Pandit says, no, you will. Your father died, you must go. Those type of problem is different. I never go. I'm a biochemical engineer, I cannot drink Ganga Jal. I go to Mandir, I cannot take Prashad like this after COVID. These changes you have to bring in you. Yeah. So as and if you want net zero, first switch off these lights, then discuss sustainability. Yeah. Those who are discussing sustainability have no idea what is this. Yes. So and now they are request me that they want to give some memento, which is waste of time and money, <laughs> because at this age, we will not hang it. <laughs> give it a tie at least, or a type in, or a single rose, or a tulsi plant, or a neem plant, which we can do whatever we want. Yes. But this is foolishness. Yes. They earn money, they must give better things. Yes. So okay. uh, yeah. 2070 is going to happen, but I am yes. my question is why 2070? Yes, why not 2035? Yeah. We can do it like this. When we want election in 24, we can this also do by 2030. And yes. we must do. But everybody has to play a role which we are not playing. You know? yes. There is no need. We must stop giving these bottles, then think of plastic. This is also single-use plastic. Yes. This is also single-use plastic. What for? Nobody can read this. I always return it back. Yeah. I'm not going to take that gift also. The tea they couldn't offer. Anyway, if any question now, we will discuss at tea time, why to waste time for the next one. Otherwise, you all will be late. I will go home after this. <laughs> thank you very much. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's a good discussion. There was no intention for everybody. But the intention was to take out good from you. We, you were unable to give. That is your problem. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a nice evening.